What's going on YouTube? To start off, apologize for my motley appearance. Due to recent events, I needed a haircut when this all started and we're uh, a month in or so now. So looking pretty raggedy. Anyways, got my little helper here, Colton. We are going to install a winch on our 2016 Jeep Wrangler JKU. So uh, this is the Hard Rock Edition. This is the uh, factory steel bumper that comes on the Hard Rock, the Recon, uh, I believe the 10th anniversary and 75th anniversary uh, Jeeps. Uh, and it does have the setup for the uh, winch. And uh, I did get a winch plate here and we'll cover that here in just a moment. All right, so uh, we decided to go with a Smitty Belt winch, 10,000 pound. Um, this one was donated to me by uh, John Cahill with ArgonStrom.com. He's sponsoring, uh, kind of semi-sponsoring this part of the build. Uh, this is actually off of his uh, his Jeep, and and he's not Jeep much anymore, so he decided to give it to the channel so we can put it on our Jeep here. So we got a 10,000 pound Smitty Belt winch, and then we got a Bully Dog winch plate. So um, if you guys want to know more about this, uh, I can do another separate video, but let's get to the installation. A uh, little heads up on mine, I bought the Jeep used. The previous owner actually had a RV towing system installed on this. So you may see some parts where you'll see kind of a weird, uh, uh, a weird electrical control box in the bumper. I'll point it out, but I'm not gonna cover the in uninstall of that. But uh, just so you know, if you do see something like that, uh, the Jeep does have a couple other modifications on it. So let's get to this install. All right, we are going to start. The winch is gonna be mounted in, uh, in behind the bumper right here. The Fairlead plate's actually gonna mount here. There's already, there should already be an opening behind this li license plate um, mounting bracket, and we're gonna be removing this. So if you guys know where your 10 millimeter uh, socket is, that's what it is for, at least in my case, 10 millimeter to take these off, and to take all of these ones off up here is going to be a T30 Torx bit. So a T30 Torx bit. So it's gonna look like that. So we're just gonna zip this off real quick. Alrighty. Go ahead and pull those off. Is it loud? Eh, not very loud. Pull the trigger. Good job, next one. Good job. So, there's that plastic piece right there. We're probably gonna have to cut that piece out, so um, we'll get here, I'll get that taken care of here in the next couple of steps. All right, now that we got that done, we are going to remove this winch plate cover by removing all of these screws right here. These are all 30 millimeter, or sorry, uh, T30 Torx bits. T30 Torx bits to remove all these. These bolts will then free up this plate. All right, Colton, let's get to it. Got it in there, all the way up. There you go, unscrew it. Oh, careful. Keep it on mama's bumper. Did one more down to the last one. Good job. It fell down. It fell down. All right. So now that that's loose, this plate takes out. Will come out. All right. With all those torx bits removed, we can actually just slide this to one side. And we can get it out that way. So slide it to one side, get one top end out, that plate gets removed, that opens that up. So right here is that uh, trailer brake controller that uh, I need to uninstall. So we're not going to get into this too much, but this is, this is not going to be on your Jeep. So now we need to remove this plastic piece and the skid plate underneath. Alrighty, to remove this plastic piece right here, we need to unscrew these plastic rivets. So, joyous thing is the last person who had this, they stripped this one out. We're not gonna be reusing these, so we'll just do a quick, uh, a quick uh, cheat here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually screw a screw down into this, grab pliers, and we're just gonna pull those out right there. So we're not gonna reuse those and don't fuss around with those too much. So now that the screw pulled that core piece out, just 
take a flathead screwdriver and excuse me buddy you can take a flathead screwdriver and then you can pull out the rest of it so repeat it for the other side all right as you can see we got both of those plastic rivets out we're just going to grab this and we'll slide it out sideways so plates removed that opens up everything else again you're going to see a lot more of these wires just sitting in here this is just for the tow kit that was on here we're going to get that out of here all right so now we got to remove the lower skid plate so looking at the jeep we're going to go underneath here so you're going to see one two three four five six and seven all of those need to come off and we're going to remove this plate because ultimately what we're going to do is remove the bumper so colton you want to remove those yeah okay all right colton good job tap a little keep going keep going good job okay once you remove all these your plate will drop down from the top here i had a couple of zip ties that were attaching these wires to these points in the back so you may want to trim those first before you take that plate off Alrighty, so we got the uh, steel skid plate removed. Those are all the uh, bolts that we're holding it on. Next thing that we need to do is unplug the fog lamps. That's just simply done by going to the rear and you can see the fog light plug right here. Press the red tab on the top and then pull to unplug like that. Repeat for the other side. All right, Colton, you ready to take off the bumper? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have these, I believe these are 18 millimeter nuts. There's two here, two on the other side, two here, two on the other side, a total of eight. So again, there's two here, two here, two here, and two here. So we are going to take those off to remove our bumper. You ready to do that? Yeah. All right, Colton, let's go ahead and take that off. Two hands. Want to hold it in place? Yep, go. Keep going. Keep going. Go. Keep going. Hold it down. Good job. High five, buddy. Have it. High five. Good job. Mm. All right. We got seven more to go. And just to show getting the nuts off the back side here. So, using an extension with the 18 millimeter deep socket. Alrighty, when you uh, get those, those nuts off, there's these spacers here, okay? There's a spacer there. There's one right there, okay? On the back side, on the opposite end, you'll see there's one there. And then around to the other side, there should be one right there. So once those are off, don't forget where you put your stuff. Once you, put, once you get all those off, the bumper should lift right off. Should is the key. Let's, uh, let's find out. Oh, yeah, look at that. Colton, look. Woo. The bumper's off. Yay. What you think? Good. Good. High five. Ow, right? All right. Now that you have the uh, bumper removed, we need to remove this wiring harness. And uh, I believe we have to relocate that bump. So there's a couple of different ways to remove the wiring harness, but I prefer just the back of a hammer use the claw of the hammer you can pop that out now we're gonna have to relocate that the relocation bracket mount for that should be in the bully winch kit so before you go crazy trying to wedge this plate in here um, you're actually supposed to remove this uh, factory brown bracket um, so cut the welds clean the welds off a little bit of black spray paint this will come off and then there is a vacuum 
I guess that's a vacuum pump. There's a vacuum pump relocation bracket that bolts to the back of this. So I'm just gonna go, I've already started here, I'm gonna just start grinding this off. We'll take it off, clean it up, black spray paint, and then we'll get that plate on. Alrighty, once you uh, get that cut off, I missed a spot here. You can see the uh, raw metal there. Just hit it with some black paint, that way it doesn't end up rusting on you. So now that we got the factory mount removed, we are going to install the uh, relocation bracket that came with the kit. So, did this on, uh, on one side already. Inside the kit you're going to have two of these uh, bolts longer and you're going to have three of the shorter ones. The three of the shorter ones are to mount this plate to the back of the winch plate. These guys right here are going to go on your uh, vacuum canister, nut washer through the top, through the hole on the bottom, and then you're going to do washer, lock washer, and then nut. Tighten those down so they don't come loose, and then we'll uh, move on to the next step here. So this next part is kind of difficult. You have this bolt, 19 millimeter washer, you feed it through, and then in there you see there's another washer. What I did is I used the flathead screwdriver and held the washer there as I fed the bolt through in order to hold it. And then you're gonna then have this bolt or nut that goes on the back side. But they installed this handle here, that way you can just hold it down there and then tighten down your, uh, your bolt. So let me get that done. And then we're gonna use a wrench and tighten that down. Hopefully you guys can see that from that angle. Then repeat it on the other side. Before you cinch this up all the way, make sure you're pulled all the way to the front, your bolt holes line up, and then we'll just zip this down real quick. Good. Okay, I wanted to show you this uh, relocation bracket because here's your sway bar, here's the relocation bracket, and here is the uh, vacuum canister. It is tight, okay? You have to move these uh, hoses and put them to the right spot. I haven't bolted them in yet, but I wanted to show you. The instructions tell you to put the, uh, these nuts and bolts in this way. The rear one, I flipped it and reversed it because if you look, the plate's a little off here, but when it's all the way in, here's the sway bar, here's the vacuum canister, and there's that, the head of that bolt. There's the head of that bolt right there. I don't know if you can see it, but that is close, okay? So, flip that rear bolt. That way that'll clear. Without it, it will not clear. Okay, 10 millimeter, just holding the back there, and I'm just gonna use the impact to screw that in, so. Do that for all three. Now let's put the winch on this. We're gonna have to line up these holes. You already see the uh, nuts are already sitting in there. We'll line them up. We'll uh, put the bolts in from underneath. Winch is lined up. Got these in. Finger tighten them first so you know that they're threaded right. And then impact them the rest of the way in. Forget the rear ones. I'm gonna have to do those by hand. Okay, so we got the winch mounted. Uh, this winch plate does have the support for uh, a side mount or center mount winch. We got a center mount winch here. 
Our bumper for the hard rock though has an opening for the side mount, the offset mount. The Bulldog kit comes with this plate, which we can install there. I got my Smitty Belt winch plate that we can install right there. So in installing this winch plate, we're just gonna line up all the holes, drop the hardware in, and you'll notice that the opening for the fair lead is blocked on this side. So I'm just going to drill a new, a new opening in that spot. So once all those holes are lined up, you can see that's where the side of the winch plate or side of the bumper is right there. Honestly, when you install the winch plate, it's gonna clear completely so we don't have to worry about cutting out too much. So we're just gonna drill out that spot. Alrighty, so I centered uh, everything with the hardware and I took a pencil and I marked where the hole needs to be. So let's go get a drill and we'll drill that out. Well, hopefully I got you filming this time because last time I had the uh, pilot hole, uh, when I was drilling the pilot hole, I didn't have the camera going. So uh, have the pilot hole in there and now we're just gonna go back in with the drill bit to clear it out. Alrighty, uh, got the bulldog plate mounted on there with the with the bolts. That's drilled out. I hit it with some paint so it wouldn't rust on us. And now the fair lead will just mount on. We'll get those bolted in. All right, guys, uh, I started putting the bumper on last night and the lighting was really bad and I was worried that you guys weren't gonna be able to see anything. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up where we left off by putting on the bumper today. So right now, all I've done is just picked up the bumper and then slid the uh, eight post through the, uh, front, uh, through the uh, front plate there. When we're putting these back in, we're gonna use our nut to screw those in, but do not forget to uh, use these uh, these plates back in, uh, put these plates back in. Okay, just wanted to show you, the plate is back in there and it's gonna be just like that. That's how we took it off, the white part on the top and then we're just gonna tighten these all down. After you got your bumper reattached, don't forget to reattach your uh, fog light power cables. So at this point, the last thing that we need to do is wire the winch power cables. Positive to the positive, ground to the ground. And we're gonna run it up here to the battery. So the route that I'm actually gonna take is it's gonna go follow the winch. I'm gonna go behind this bushing, this body mount. I'm gonna go behind this and then we're gonna go up. We're gonna come up from right here behind the air box and then we're gonna come straight across and then we're gonna to go to our battery terminals there. One of the other options that you can get is uh, get some of this uh, anti-chafing, this plastic wrap stuff to go around your cables. That way, if there's any place that it's rubbing on, repeated rubbing won't end up cutting through the cable. I'm gonna see if I can repurpose some of the, uh, the chafing uh, shield that I took off of the, the uh, tow package that was uh, on the Jeep that I don't need anymore, but I'm gonna see if I can repurpose some of that for the cables here, just for a little added protection. Alrighty, so the power cables from the winch go up here behind that bushing. The negative line goes up on this side and that gives me enough line to get to the negative. The uh, positive wire was actually shorter so I actually, instead of running it on this side of the air box coming up right here, I actually came in um, on the driver's side of the air box and just came up, went under the air box and we're just gonna run the line up through here to come to the, the uh, battery. Uh, just make sure that you're clear of the fan and clear of the belts and then make sure we're zip tying 
uh, as much as we can just to keep these things from sliding down and getting out of the way. Um, I may make sure that this is zip tied in better just to make sure that this doesn't come down and catch the wheel and get ripped out. But we are going to get those zip tied after we get the power hooked up. So it's just a 10 millimeter and we're just going to open up one of these uh, one of these posts here just to hook up the power and uh, we'll zip tie all the power cables in. Alrighty, so we have the positive and the negative hooked up. I put the uh, anti-chafing shields on these. This uh, shield's probably a little too small. You can see the cable is still out, but uh, until I can get the proper size shield, those are gonna do for right now. Um, positive line goes down on the driver's side of the airbox. Negative line goes down on the passenger side of the airbox, and it goes into the winch. So, at this point right now, the last thing we need to do is put the winch cable back on the winch. To start with, for this particular winch, it's telling you which way to wrap it. So what we're gonna do is feed the line in underneath, under the drum, and come back over the top of the drum, and then we're gonna anchor it with this um, Allen nut right here. That way when we use the, the remote to wind in the winch, it'll pull in from underneath and wrap around. So then there is the winch on that little Allen screw. It goes down around the back of the spool, out the bottom, and then through your fair lead. Alrighty, so we got the uh, winch line pulled out. It's all bolted in. And so basically, as you're operating the switch to wheel uh, to roll this in, you wanna keep some tension on the winch line. That way it winds up correctly. So I am going to go ahead and start up the Jeep and we're gonna run the winch and uh, wheel it in. The winch will operate without the Jeep running. It'll run off the battery power, but that is gonna be an unneeded drain on the battery, so we're just gonna run the Jeep and we'll pull it in that way to spool up the drum. Now in. Okay, in. So that's basically gonna, sorry about that, that's basically gonna sum up the install of the winch plate and the winch on the Rubicon. Um, there is still the metal skid plate that we need to bolt on underneath here to finish everything up and then one extra step that I'm actually doing is I don't really like the exposed don't really like the exposed uh, holes there so I am just taking the uh, plate that was on there before and literally you can take a uh, I'm just actually using a Torx bit screw but you can use a, uh, a punch or something like that lift it up and then push down and you can push all those pieces off use these and the uh, screws that were in their factory and then you can just screw it back into the bumper for a more finished look so again uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out watching the video following me on this install um, as time goes on we're gonna do some more uh, installs on the Jeep we're gonna do lift kits wheels, tires, all that sort of stuff. But one step at a time, you know, another shout out to argonstrom.com for uh, hooking us up with the winch. Uh, I got some more goodies in the back of the Jeep here that argonstrom.com hooked us up with. Uh, we'll get to those in some later videos. But uh, again, thank you for uh, checking out the video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful to you. Take care.